Hi, it's Lee from the Japanese Water Gardens. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about something called pH and KH. Earlier today, I went out to our ponds, I took a sample of water from our pond and a sample of rainwater. Let's test the pH. So pH is a scale from zero to 14. Smack bang in the middle, we call it neutral. On the acidic side, you got something like vinegar. Vinegar have a pH of about three or four. At the other end of the scale, you've got alkalines. Chalk is an alkaline. pH, doing a Tetra test kit. I'm gonna use seven drops into five mil. We'll do the rainwater. Quick shake. Definite difference on that is the uh, pond water, which is pH about eight, perfectly normal. That's exactly what we'd expect. Here's the rainwater. Now the pH on this is more neutral. So this would be pH around about seven. Now this is not particularly unsuitable for fish, but let's test something else called KH. And this is gonna show us a big difference between pond water and rainwater. Now your fish don't want to be swimming around in vinegar. One of the best ways that we can prevent the pH from becoming really low is to do a regular partial water change or to use some of this stuff. KH buffer powder. It's not expensive. You just need to put a little bit of it into your pond every week or so to keep the KH high. If you have a high KH, it's much more difficult for your pH to drop. You can also drop bags of oyster shells into your filter and they will help to stabilize your pH as well. A KH is a test of carbonate hardness. And the more drops that we have to put of this in before it turns yellow, the higher our carbonate hardness. And higher carbonate hardness is considered more stable. So let's count them into the pond water. One. Two. Three. Four. So it took about four drops to turn the pond water yellow. That means we have a carbonate hardness of about four. Let's test the rainwater. One drop. That's not gone blue. Two drops are in and it's turning yellow. So the rainwater has an extremely low level of carbonate hardness. That means that if you was to use a lot of rainwater in your pond, you could experience some pH problems. The most common problem that we have with customers ponds during the winter over the last few years has been a condition called pH crash. All of the biological processes that are taking place in your pond are actually trying to turn the water into an acid. The minerals that are needed for the filtration gradually become depleted. And if you're not replacing them frequently enough, your pH can suddenly crash. We often get customers coming in where the pH is so low that it's down to four or five, and the fish obviously suffer. The last thing that you want is for your pH to just crash. I've actually done two other videos that you can take a look at that will explain a little bit more about pH crash and how you can avoid it. I'm going to say goodnight for now because it's starting to get dark. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.